Hi, welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts. In this show, we'll explore interesting and intriguing episodes from humanity's past, from the ancient times all the way to the modern era. Today we'll talk about one of the most infamous events in modern history, the Salem Witch Trials. Over 300 years ago, a small village in Massachusetts entered the history books for the wrong reasons. The people of Salem were accusing each other of witchcraft. Trials were held and 20 people were found guilty and executed. Historians attributed this event to things like mass hysteria to hallucinogenic fungi. But what did happen in Salem all those years ago? On August 19, 1692, a cart was leaving the village with five prisoners. They were taken to a hill on the east of Salem where they were to be executed. One of them was George Burroughs, the former priest of the village who now fell in disgrace and was found guilty of witchcraft. During his trial and all the way to his execution, Burroughs claimed he was innocent. He even managed to affect the people with his plea of innocence and many burst into tears. But the judge, Cotton Mather, was unswayed and said that the devil can sometimes take the shape of an angel. Thus Burroughs was hanged. It all sounds gruesome and cruel, but the whole thing started out as an innocent game. Betty Paris, the daughter of the vicar, was playing with her friends a game of predicting the future. They were putting egg whites in a pot of water and interpreted the shapes to predict their future. Tituba, the family's housemaid, originally from South America, taught the girls this game to drive away the boredom of the long winter nights. One of the girls, though, said she saw a coffin and started screaming. Frightened, the other girls also screamed hysterically. Betty's father sent for the village doctor who couldn't come up with a medical explanation. He noted the girls were laughing uncontrollably and shouted obscenities. He concluded the girls were under the influence of something evil. A month had passed and the girls were no better off. In fact, this strange behavior had spread to others. When they were questioned, they all said that they were the victims of evil spells and all accused three of the villagers, Sarah Osborne, Sarah Good and Tituba. The three women accused of being witches couldn't prove they weren't. Osborne was not a churchgoer, Good was a beggar and Tituba was a Native American slave. So on February 29, all three were arrested, but this didn't stop the witch hunt. On the contrary, the hysteria was just beginning. The bewitched girls were still bewitched. Some were screaming, some were hallucinating, while others were swearing at anything considered holy. To stop this, the governor of Massachusetts intervened and established a special court to find and trial every witch. These trials were sinister to say the least. The victims were shaking and screaming whenever they saw the so-called witches. It was thought that the specter of the witch was still tormenting the girls. As the trials went on, the stories told were getting gruesome. The local innkeeper stated that whenever Sarah Wilds, another accused, was clenching her fist and tilt her head, the girls felt torture. A sailor, Philip English, was seen together with one Susanna Sheldon and a dark shadowy figure wearing a crown and holding a book. The most controversial trial was that of Rebecca Nurse. The 71-year-old woman was the mother of eight and a well-respected member of the community. The Putnam family, though, accused her of bewitching their eight-year-old girl, Anne, and her mother. She was acquitted, but when the sentence was pronounced, the Putnam girls started screaming like hell. 
The judges then changed the verdict and declared Rebecca Nurse guilty of witchcraft. So what on earth was happening in Salem? The trials went on for four months. Twenty people were found guilty and executed, fourteen of them women. Five others, including two children, died while in prison. Over the years, historians try to explain this bizarre episode of mass hysteria in an otherwise quiet and pious community. Some say it was really a case of mass hysteria, a type of herd mentality. There is some evidence that a type of hallucinogenic fungus infected the grain and provoked the hallucinations. There's also a theory that an epidemic of sleeping sickness was the culprit. Sleeping sickness, or encephalitis lethargica, is an extremely contagious disease that attacks the brain and leaves the victim in an almost zombie-like state. But the reasons for the Salem witch trials might be much simpler, and a major clue lies in an old map of the village. In 1867, Charles Upham drew a recreation of Salem's map, as it was during the witch trials. He also indicated the houses of the main figures of the trials. This map shows a very suspicious trend. Almost all of the people accused of witchcraft were living on the east side, and almost all of the accusers were on the west side. Most of the skeptics that defended the accused also came from the East. It's a bit odd that the devil only chose that side of Salem, isn't it? This odd division convinced some historians to dig deeper into Salem's history. In 1626, a new port was built nearby in Salem town, a different, larger settlement from Salem village. This attracted a lot of merchants and transformed the town into a flourishing commercial hub. Salem Village, though, changed in a different way. The eastern side had a road, Ipswich Road, which led directly into town. The fields on the eastern side were also much larger and fertile than in the west. Many of the villagers from the east became innkeepers, shoemakers or pot makers, and so prospered. The Western families, though, were facing economic difficulties. Travelers would not pass through this part of the village, and the fields were not as large and fertile. Families like the Putnams or Ingersolls were taking part in the village's political affairs, but economically were getting weaker and weaker. By the 1660s, the Westerners pleaded for independence from the town, but the Easterners feared this move would jeopardize their well-being, and so opposed the separation. So the village was now divided, and the two sides were not getting along at all. There was also a religious connotation to this dispute. Like most settlers of the time in Massachusetts, the people of Western Salem Village were Puritans and thus were abiding by very strict and austere rules. The merchants of Salem Town and, by extension, the villagers of the East were considered to be immoral and lustful. The Puritans thus built their own chapel, and after many reverends came and went, Samuel Paris was chosen to stay. The Putnam family was large, and more than half of the congregation was dominated by them. Eastern families boycotted the gatherings and fought to replace Paris. Now you can see how the scope of the witch trials got to be so big. By the end of the trials, basically anyone from the West could accuse someone from the East of witchcraft, even if they didn't know the person. The children's testimonies were also understandable. They were targeting the people their parents hated and cursed their entire lives. So the trials had a lot to do with politics and less with the divine. Remember Sarah Wilde? She was one of the accused. But her husband was also part of a committee that solved land disputes. He once settled an issue that benefited the neighboring village of Topsfield. 
The former priest of Salem, George Burroughs, didn't even live in the village at the time of the trials. He left the place in 1683 after a dispute with the Putnam family, from whom he borrowed money to bury his wife. The dispute was solved in a court, but the Putnams didn't forget about him. George Burroughs was brought back to Salem from New Jersey and thanks to the Putnam children's testimony, he was found guilty and executed. And Putnam, who was then eight years old, was one of the main accusers that killed Burroughs. And many years later, she actually confessed that the trials were a fraud, a deception orchestrated by the devil. So it seems that the frightening Salem witch trials were nothing more than a case of petty revenge. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. I hope this was interesting and informative and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.